This is Dan Baker, and today I'm going to be talking about using some GeoGebra interactives for learning and teaching. The GeoGebra interactives I'm talking about today are part of a larger project, which is an open educational resources textbook available in the spring of 2021 called Engineering Statics. And the idea behind engineering statics is fundamentally not only to have a good, concise, clear textbook, but it's also to replace all the boring textbook figures with interactives so that students can play with them, that you could also use them for in-class demonstrations and the like. And so the interactives that I'll show today are actually part of this textbook. It will be published online, will be its primary version, and also as a printable PDF. So a few more details about GeoGebra. GeoGebra at its core is a essentially a graphing calculator. Now, once you graph things, once you draw things, it creates geometric objects which you then can manipulate, and that's actually how we're using it. In a broader sense, GeoGebra is a really amazing open source platform where all teachers anywhere in the world where they have access either to the web or a downloaded version of GeoGebra, it's both online and also um, on your computer if you'd like to download it, uh, that it's open without barriers of finance or access. And so I have these really powerful tools to learn. It is used most probably for K-12 education, has been my finding, but I think its use in higher education is, is equally as beneficial. So just to show you a quick view of what GeoGebra looks like, here is a view of GeoGebra. This is the latest version. And so we see here in the middle is basically kind of our graphing calculator window. Over here on the left-hand side, we're gonna see some objects show up and the input bar down here at the bottom where you can type things in. Now you can also manipulate things using the graphical menus up top. So we're gonna use some of those. So say I wanna put in here point A and point B and then draw a vector between those two points with just very few clicks of the mouse. I've actually created this geometric object, which if I wanted to, I then could change the location of A. And what you'll see is not only that A adapts, but also this vector here that connects A and B adapts as well. Over on the right-hand side, this is the settings window. We can change all sorts of things related to the color and styles and different things get very advanced in how we see that object and also how it acts. Okay, so that's the basic idea of how these interactives are developed. So here's the first interactive that I wanted to share with you, and this is based in chapter four of our book, which is looking at moments. Now, moments are a really challenging thing for static students to learn. They might understand what a force is. They might understand that a force causing some rotation happens to be a moment, but not really understand all the details. And so what you can do with this interactive is that you can change both the angle here of the force and also you can change the angle of the wrench. Okay, so this wrench is rotating here around point A. Now what you'll see happening as I move the wrench around is you'll see that the moment around point A indicated by this curved moment vector, this red vector, changes in size, okay? So the bigger that circle, the bigger that rotational vector, the larger the moment. And what hopefully this allows the student to do is see, oh look, when the line of action of this force goes right through a point of interest, it causes no moment around that point, right? Differentiating what is a force from what is a moment. The other thing you'll see happen here is that the direction of this moment arrow adapts um, with the right-hand rule, right? So now this is a negative moment from the right-hand rule. We're on the other side over here. We had a positive moment from the right-hand rule. Okay, so that is our moment example. And another example we can take a look at is based upon 3D vectors. Now, 3D vectors are kind of hard to see, right? If you try to draw them in two-dimensional space, as just kind of like they're drawn right here on the screen, hard to visualize. I've added into this one some what I call ghost boxes, where we can actually kind of see where those are in space. Now, another great thing here in a virtual environment is you can grab a hold of the screen just by clicking on it, moving your mouse around, and actually see exactly how these vectors are lying in overall three-dimensional space. Now, this system is examining a dot product, and so, we can first of all take a look at the angle between these two vectors. And I can move around here to see, oh, this angle is actually in the plane of the two vectors, right? It kind of disappears here when I'm looking at the edge of it and kind of look at the side of it over here. I can also numerically compute in this problem both the magnitude of the projection of FB onto FA and also show that vector, 
right here once again you can move it around to see that that projection um, is either in line with fb it's actually in the opposite direction of fb and that all three of the vectors shown the projection fa and fb are all in the same plane right something you typically can't do on paper and then the last thing this has built into it is also finding this perpendicular portion um, that FA is perpendicular to FB. Basically, it's the other leg of this right triangle. Okay, and it also in the background is computing the components of each of these vectors. It's computing this angle. If we go ahead and change any of these numbers, say I change this Z component of A to a positive 10, the whole thing adapts with that and it recomputes a new answer. You don't have to click run, it, it just goes. And so we can move this around once again to get the best view. On most of these, you can actually grab a hold of the labels as well. If things get a little bit convoluted, you can move things around to get a little bit better view. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how these interactives work. So if you have any questions about these interactives or our textbook project, please email me. Feel free to connect with me on Twitter at Dr. Dan Teaches. And also, if you'd like to take a look of some of the many interactives on our in our textbook, visit the link below.